Chapter 6, The Big Idea Three things happened later that same afternoon. Nick and Janet Fisk had missed the bus because of a school newspaper meeting, so they walked home together. They were seeing who could walk along the curb without falling. It took a lot of concentration, and when Janet stepped off into the street, Nick said, that's three points for me. But Janet said, I didn't fall. I saw something. Look. She bent down and picked up a gold ballpoint pen, the fancy kind. That was the first thing, Janet finding the pen. They got back on the curb, and Nick followed Janet, putting one foot carefully in front of the other on the narrow concrete curb. And while he stepped along, he thought back over the school day, especially about his report and what Mrs. Granger had said about words at the end of the period finally sank in. That was the second thing, understanding what Mrs. Granger had said. She had said, who says dog means dog? You do, Nicholas. You do, Nicholas, he repeated to himself. I do, Nick thought, still putting one foot in front of the other following Janet. What does that mean? And then Nick remembered something. When he was about two years old, his mom had bought him one of those unbreakable cassette players and a bunch of sing-along tapes. He had loved them, and he had played them over and over and over and over. He would carry the tape and the player to his mother or his big brother or his father and bang them together and say, Guagala, 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 until someone put the cassette in the machine and turned it on. And for three years, whenever he said guagala, his family knew that he wanted to hear those pretty sounds made with voices and instruments. Then, when Nick went to preschool, he learned that if he wanted his teacher and the other kids to understand him, he had to use the word music. But guagala meant that nice sound to Nick because Nick said so. Who says guagala means music? You do, Nicholas. No fair, yelled Janet. They were at the corner of their own street, and Nick had bumped into her, completely absorbed in his thoughts. Janet stumbled off the curb, and the gold pen in her hand clattered onto the street. Sorry, I didn't mean to, honest, said Nick. I just wasn't watching. Here. Nick stooped over and picked up the pen and held it out to her. Here's your... And that's when the third thing happened. Nick didn't say pen. Instead, he said... Here's your friendle. Friendle? Janet took her pen and looked at him like he was nuts. She wrinkled her nose and said, What's a friendle? Nick grinned and said, You'll find out. See you later. It was there at the corner of Spring Street and South Grand Avenue, one block from home on a September afternoon. That's when Nick got the big idea. And by the time he had run down the street and up the steps and through the door and upstairs to his room, it wasn't just a big idea. It was a plan, a whole plan, just begging for Nick to put it into action. And action was Nick's middle name. The next day after school, the plan began. Nick walked into the Penny Pantry store and asked the lady behind the counter for a frindle. She squinted at him. A what? A frindle, please, a black one, and Nick smiled at her. She leaned over closer and aimed one ear at him. You want, what? A frindle. And this time Nick pointed at the ballpoint pens behind her on the shelf. A black one, please. The lady handed Nick the pen. He handed her the 49 cents, said thank you, and left the store. Six days later, Janet stood at the corner of the penny pantry. Same store, same lady. John had come in the day before, and Pete the day before that, and Chris the day before that, and Dave the day before that. Janet was the fifth kid that Nick had sent there to ask that woman for a frindle. And when she asked, the lady re reached right for the pens and said, blue or black? Nick was standing one aisle away at the candy racks and he was grinning. Frindle was a real word. It meant pen. Who says frindle means pen? You do, Nicholas. Half an hour later, a group of serious fifth graders had a meeting in Nick's playroom. It was John, Pete, Dave, Chris, and Janet. Add Nick and that six kids, six secret agents. They held up their right hands and read the oath Nick had written out. From this day on and forever, I will never use the word pen again. Instead, I will use the word frindle, and I will do everything possible so others will too. And all six of them signed the oath with Nick's frindle. The plan would work. Thanks, Mrs. Granger.